everybody, Jason Burmis here, and as always on Mondays at 6 p.m., I am joined by John Fitch for Mixed Martial Mindset. How are we doing, John? I'm doing good. We got a lot to talk about. We got the BMF event. We got the BMF title. We got comments on McGregor, but my favorite thing I saw today was on the John Fitch Knows Nothing podcast where you squared up Nate Diaz style. So those that don't watch the show and just listen to the podcast, you're missing out. Can we see that square up again? Oh, the, the, this one? <laughs> yes, the one where you have freakishly long arms, John, and it becomes apparent that yeah, if you got your mitts on any human pray, being, it would be over quick. Mantis attack. He's Mantis style. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I want to talk about that fight because I think we have a, a different perspective on it. I heard you on the John Fitch Knows Nothing. But before we get there, folks, I want to let you guys know that you can check out johnfitch.net. That's where you can find his Instagram, his Facebook, his Twitter, and, of course, his Live. YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, he, and when do you tell people about the uh, John Fitch Knows Nothing cast? Because you're doing yeah, I do, uh, uh, daily most now. weekdays. I'm doing a, uh, a little podcast live stream called John Fitch Knows Nothing. I do a lot of interaction with uh, my listeners. So it's a lot of fun. We cover a lot of a wide range of topics. Uh, MMA, of course, uh, dirty business, Bitcoin, all kinds of stuff. It's Excellent. Good, it's a good, good fun time. Clean it, family. Well, it's not very family. <laughs> well, masculinity. I think it's, it's geared it's towards a, uh, a male audience, you know, and a... a a biological yes. audience. It's stuff that I, I very we're, much like. We're and, very, uh, folks, very pro-biology and we're very pro-masculinity. I, how dare you? How dare you say such things mm-hmm. in, uh, in 2019, almost 2020? You're, you're a caveman, John. Uh, we're and, trying to bring back, we're trying to bring forth a renaissance of masculinity. A renaissance of masculinity. You are the renaissance, man. I mean, you're doing a lot. Right. And Folks, you want to check this out on audio, uh, thegruelingtruth.com, thegruelingtruth.com. Uh, I actually love this thumbnail. I haven't checked this casual Mondays out, but yeah, it looked like Canelo was juiced to the tits for this fight. Um, yeah, his, <laughs> yeah it's, it's good he stuff. He was jacked. I mean, he was he moved up in weight, and Kovlov looked like he'd never been hit that hard in his life. No, he didn't, and, and I think that's something to get into as well. But before we do any of it, um, let's talk about, I, I want to just go over the card, because I watched it top to bottom. I know you only watched, uh, what, a little bit of the prelims in the main card? Of uh, the boxing event? No, of the, uh, I know you watched some of the prelims in the box. I'm talking about the BMF yeah. title. No, 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 I watched, I watched the majority of the fights. I missed the Arlovsky fight. I don't know why. I did catch the um, Corey Andrews fight. Phenomenal. That dude, I mean, I'm really pissed about how they're treating him. Yeah, and they're, they're and they're fucking they're him again, him. John. They're, they're fucking him again 100%. in that same interview. Where and we're gonna go over it. Where Dana White finally, for the first time ever, has acknowledged what three and a half, four weeks later that there are two separate uh, investigations going on on Con- Conor McGregor, and mm-hmm. we'll get to that in a minute. He also said that uh, Reyes is still ahead of Corey Anderson. That's because Corey Anderson looks fucking vicious. And he looks yes. like he's ready to take it down. And they want to, and it's pro wrestling. It's not a real sport. They want to maximize their profits off of Jones until uh, they want to crown a new champ. I, I think you're 100 percent right. So let's go over this. Uh, it also, it also down- means like part of this is they, they don't want John Jones to lose, not because just because they're going to lose the money from uh, promoting him as a champ, but also because. If you have another guy win the title and and uh, and defends it, then it's, it's another guy they got to cut in on the take. And not only cut in on the take, right? John Jones won't be cheap after he loses. He's got a certain contract. Number one, number two. Corey Han- Anderson is saying things other UFC guys are not saying, which they know is a problem, yeah. especially if they give him the championship. Well, well, he's like a lot of guys. He's he's Neo in the Matrix. Like he's starting to notice things. He's noticing the glitches. There's something wrong. But he hasn't put his finger on it yet. He hasn't taken the red pill yet. I That's why I'm his guy. I, I think send, you send know, him he's, he's my, sounded off. Send off. him my stuff. Send him, no, because they, they still, he still thinks he's an employee. He still says certain things that you can tell. He's just, he's not unplugged. He's not completely unplugged yet. Mm-hmm. Most of these guys aren't. Like, as long as they're getting that little drop of breadcrumbs, it's hard to unplug them. Well, there's no way that he shouldn't be uh, the next in line for the title. He's been destroying guys, destroying guys. And Not a needle mover. That's that's gaslighting. They're lying to you if they say something like that. Not a needle mover. 
Like, first off, they're the promoter. They're the ones who move the needle, especially with the UFC. Mm-hmm. When they give attention and they point the spotlight on somebody, that guy becomes a needle mover. That guy becomes popular. It doesn't not happen that way. If if they label you something negative, that sticks. If they label you as something positive, that sticks. Like they have a lot of power. Propaganda is very powerful, and they use it, you know, very very well. So let's look at the fights. Uh, started all with a good one, man. And I'd say this on this card: there were only two fights that were in any way lackluster, and it was the Gaslam Till co-main event. And then you had uh, Chikagian, who they're trying to push as a number one. She's barely beat anybody. Uh, they put her in with Maya, a number five, and she didn't look good there. But Arce Dawadu, uh, those are two up-and-comers, two young guys, really good fight, split decision. I wouldn't have been upset either way, but I, I did have Dawadu uh, winning it. But again, Arce, you could make a case for it. Lyman Good looked fucking vicious against Chance uh, Recounter. Chance uh, has Indian blood in him. There were three fights where you could say that people, you, you could have stopped it at some point. They were taking shots you couldn't believe, and it would be the Lyman Good Chance Recounter. He finally got him in the third round. Uh, uh, Blagoy Ivanov took shots from Derek Lewis. Most human beings would have died several times from. And uh, the Luke A. Thompson fight. I mean, Luke A. took some shots from Thompson. There were some mm-hmm. big hitters on this uh, card, uh, John. What did you think about the it's, fact? Man, again, this blow, this stuff really irritates me because, once again, okay, Blagoy, superior grass, gra- grappling, better on the ground, knows what he's doing, but continually um, wants to stand and trade with him. Mm-hmm. Like, he has a clear path to victory. And I don't know why these guys don't just stick to it, you know? Punch his way into clinch, clinch him up, foot sweeps all day long. Foot sweeps, knees, foot sweeps, knees. And then he goes for one submission. Side control and those submissions are kind of garbage. And, and by the right. way, that one submission you're talking about, it did look Americana. like his arm was pretty far back. If he had a little bit – hey, Derek Lewis, to his credit, he didn't gas <clears> after two. He wasn't huffing and puffing yep. like in previous fights. Uh, mm-hmm. But, like you said, when he had side control on Lewis, he was dominating that fight. You know, Billy, a- if you're a heavyweight, guys, if you're out there – Heavyweight, listen, <laughs> knee on belly, F side control. Like, and you're a big dude. It takes a lot of work to uh, to get you off. Get knee on belly. One or two big shots. That fight's over with. Right? Don't 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 waste that opportunity. Well, you would think that. The ground, Lewis hit him with seventy five big shots. Like some of those uppercuts yeah. that Ivanov I mean, was eating were insane. Um, let's go over some more of the card and, and good. He made, he made the fight hard, mm-hmm. harder than it needed to be. And then he lost. Good looked um, amazing. And chance for counters looked like, uh, and then, uh, um, Luke, mm-hmm. right. I guess Stephen Thomas, same thing, same thing. That guy, he did a great job of what, that's what you do with a guy, guy who jumps around a lot and moves around laterally. You got to chop the legs. You have to, right. He is going to have a hard time checking, when he's moving like that. So you have to just beat the legs, beat the legs. He did a pretty good job of that, but then he he failed to try to close the distance. And I don't know, he's from Brazil, but I don't know if he's more of a grappler, but where's his takedown? Where's his, where's his clinch? You know this guy, his worst and his weakest is on his back. Why not focus on putting him there? Yeah, and Woodley, even, even you know, a lot of pe- people want to call it a boring fight, but as a counter striker and a wrestler, kind of showed the blueprint uh, to take out Wonder Boy without striking, without putting yourself in a lot of danger. And, you mm-hmm. know, again, Luke got hit with a lot of shots. Arlovsky, yeah. he goes down pretty hard and quick on a backing counter punch uh, for, from Rosenstruck. That makes him uh, 6-0. and This guy looks dangerous, man. I got to tell you, for the heavyweight vision, he looks pretty dangerous. I know you missed that fight, but I'll be keeping my eyes on him. Uh, Ed yeah, Michigan. I love Andre. He's great, but at the same time, he's got that one punch button. He d- and, and by the way, he's the longest running heavyweight, if not fighter, in the UFC. This is a guy that held the championship before 2000. He, I That's believe, true. we looked it up. 2000 was his first <laughs> UFC fight, and I think he got the belt within the first year. That's inc- that's crazy to be fighting at that level. Be a journeyman who fought at I think one FC versus Silva for the third time. He fought World Series of Fighting. Um, uh, he did. Did he do Bellator or not? Affliction. Affliction. That's right. That's where he got he did, knocked out by did, Fedor, and he looked good he for the first. Strike. Did he do Strike Force? Yes. I don't know yes, he did. I'm almost sure you're sure he did Strike Force at some point too. After Sylvia 
beat him in the second fight, and then they had to meet at a third time. I think that was 1FC, which is a really weird one because they were allowing head kicks in some situations. And he yeah, head it was kicked. Unclear. Yeah, he head kicked S- S- Sylvia, and they called it kind of a DQ because they said he wasn't on his way up enough. It was a weird situation. But listen, man, that's a boxer that's you've been tuned up, but tuned other people up and lasted for 20 years in the sport. It's incredible. Yep. Especially a heavyweight. <laughs> Shabazian. He goes in there. Brad Brad Tavares, I feel like he's their perennial he's, top 15 guy. They put to people, see if they can beat him. He's, he's taking a lot of damage, man. I don't like to see guys like him. He's been taking, you know, because it's not like he's getting submitted or losing decisions. He's getting knocked out. <clears throat> well, I'd say this. I hope he's got some people around him that are really looking at him and taking he, care of him. He lasted to a decision. and he, I mean, he got beat up but with Israel Adesanya in a main event. I believe it was a five-round mm-hmm. fight, you know, and – Shabazian came in there. I think that was his last fight, actually. If you look at Tavares' record, it's actually better than you think. He was stringing a couple together. He's been knocked out, but that was only his fifth fight. Yeah, loss. I mean, it's not it's not that uh, guys, you know, can't win fight or they're not good. It's just, uh, you know, their chin. You get to a certain point, and uh, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if the return on investment is worth it. I, I, I feel that. And by the way, Flick Off, thank you so much for that $20 super chat. Water blast in the house, so can't watch live. We'll watch later. Just here to donate and drop it. Thumbs up. Thank, thank you, sir. I really do appreciate that. Um, let's see. Burgos versus uh, uh, Amir Akani. Uh, what did Burgos got the decision in that one, right? Yeah, he got a – no, he finished it. He finished it with like 30 seconds to go. That was a close fight. I remember watching that one. That was a pretty good barn burner. Corey Anderson went in there and destroyed Johnny Walker. He's, Johnny he's Walker like a, had him up against monster. the cage. He's couldn't do anything. Just, just And then he went in and just struck. Yeah. Uh, and again, Anderson. And, and I think um, one of the reasons why he's really successful is because he can change levels and threaten the strike and threaten the takedown. I agree. So you have a lot of guys who do fancy stand up shit get froze. And, and being able to transition and, and attack different levels throws guys off and, ma- and makes you a better striker. And I got a comment in here from uh, Ian Gifford. Burgo suggested brilliantly. You're, you're right. Amir Khani had that first round. Uh, the second round, Burgo started to take over, and then he did dominate the third round and finally put him out. I do remember that. Gillespie comes in. Looks like he got Bur- uh, he got it tired. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amir Khani definitely started gassing. Yeah. Uh, but there he was came also at him hard point. and fast in the, in the beginning. I, I think he also got hit in the body a couple times. If you watched Burgos, mm. he had some really nice one-twos to the body. That he slowed down. Amir Khani slowed down significantly after <clears throat> Amir Khani was a smaller guy. Maybe a little bit quicker. He showed that in the first round. Uh, but Burgos, I, I agree with Gifford. Uh, Ian, thank you for that comment. Uh, he did adjust nicely. Gillespie, never been defeated, never really been knocked down that I've seen. Was always good at getting in the clinch, taking somebody down and uh, subbing them. Kevin Lee's got really good wrestling. He's been fighting top tier whether he's won or lost the last three years now. Mm-hmm. Um, and he proved mm-hmm. himself, even with a staff infection visible again, that he's a <laughs> dangerous dude. <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody with a soap company needs to hook up with this guy. And uh, <laughs> get something going on. That's the sponsor he needs, John. You know, well, I mean, the sponsor he needs. The get their, anyway, get their body soap, something, dude wipes, whatever. That's what he needs. So No more. <laughs> split decision. I, I had Lewis win in the fight. I, I didn't think it was a split de- decision. I thought it was two rounds to, to one. Ivanov, I was kind of surprised that it went to that split. I mean, I could have seen it going to Ivanov, too, because, you know, he did get some good takedown. You know, some good takedowns, good to control. Um, I think he could have sealed it if he would have done a lot more action, a lot more damage on top when he got there. But I mean, he he did pretty even, well controlling. Even without controlling that, I think rim. I think if he controlled the the take, like he didn't get a lot of takedowns. He had him down for about a minute and a half on that arm uh, on when he was trying to twist back his arm, mm-hmm. and I thought that was dangerous. You know, again, Lewis scrapped out of that. I actually gave him that round, but. I couldn't give him the first or the third. I mean, Lewis hit him so many times clean. I was just shocked. Again, I'm not shocked because this guy's been stabbed in the chest. You can see that Mm. it wasn't just stabbed in the chest, that he's got knife marks on his head. (laughs) And I watched a little bit of the hype uh, going to bed earlier this week with, you know, him getting his wife to come into the country. He talks about it being a bar fight. But I'll say this, guys. He he runs with some rough customers over there. It's like the bar in Star Wars. (laughs) 
Yeah, it's like the bar in Star Wars. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I doubt that the man that stabbed him survived after that. And I'm pretty sure he he took like a cab or something to the hospital after that. The whole story was told, you know, on the hype. Is he, he is he uh, uh, an AKA guy? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you you you've seen him in the gym. He's a big dude. Yeah, we work out. Yeah, we've uh, hand hand fought and worked. Yeah, he's a big guy, man. He's and guy. you know, when he, when he before he got that takedown, it was very much like a a, a sambo throw. You know, kind of like this yeah. judo hip toss that took him. And you taking Derek Lewis off your feet? That's an impressive feat altogether. Yeah, oh. I mean, he's, he's good, man. He he knows how to do it. I wish he would utilize that grappling a little bit more and use his size like once the guy's down you you make him carry your weight a little bit more get him worn out and uh do a little bit more damage well that's kind of my frustration with with roy nelson man like i think he's been on the ba- bad end of some decisions lately but early roy nelson you know use that crucifix use that side control when he was in the ultimate fighter house he didn't strike with kimbo slice he waited for kimbo to come in he took him down he got on side control he subbed him and he just stopped doing that when he was hitting people with that overhand right so many times. I wish he, I, I think his record would A, be better, and maybe he'd be a little bit less exciting for the fans. But like you said, you know, this is about winning. It's not, you know, it's not about being the loser that looked nice. You don't, you don't move, you don't, you don't increase your pay that much <laughs> taking those extra risks compared to the money you make by winning. You want to make more money, you win. Like the the whole, they're being gaslit trying to convince you that you're going to make more money long term because you're exciting. It's not going to happen. You're not. You're going to get CTE. And you're going to be poor, and you're going to have to pay somebody to clean up after you. And in a sport where it's you know so much to show and so much to win, it really can hurt your purse. Now, mm-hmm. let's talk to the big big fight itself, Jorge Masvidal. Nate Diaz, obviously Jorge wins all three rounds. I don't think there's any question that. Mm -hmm. Some people might be able to even give him a 10-8 in the first when he gets that head kick on Nate and really rocks him. I could see that. You know, Nate was rolling around for a good night. He's and that fight's done right there. Really? You think so? Because he he kicked him kind of with the foot in the the lower chin chin jaw area. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as flush as it could have been. It was still pretty nasty. It was still pretty nasty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, not, bad. not only Nate, but Nick. I mean, Nick had surgery to to go over the scar tissue so that he wouldn't mm-hmm. cut. These guys are notorious mm-hmm. for being cut. I, mm-hmm. It was a vicious cut. I wanted to see rounds four and five, and and let me and let me just say why. Number one, I I don't think he was doing as badly as people say. Now, I know you were talking about a five round fight with Diaz. Now, I can't really recall. The Benson Henderson fight, which he lost, which by the way, Benson Henderson has beaten both these guys. Uh, I will say this: Masvidal's looked incredible this year, but against guys that aren't wrestlers, and we'll get into that mm. in a moment. Um, yep. Styles make the fights e- exactly, and and the fights that Especially Masvidal has lost wrestling. in the past were largely him being taken to the ground and all of his offense taken away. The guys that he's beat this year, and again, I'm not shitting on him. I think he's done incredible. Cowboy is a is a guy who trades. He beat Cowboy. Ben Askren's a wrestler, but we all know what happened there. There was no wrestling to be done. I mean, he ran in there, and he mm-hmm. and he nailed it. Um, who was the other guy that he? Darren Till sat there and traded. And Till, you know, caught him a couple times. You know, Till didn't look great, but he did beat Gaslam, which hey, top tier guy. I'll give him that. Uh, Masvidal ends up knocking him out. Nate's got a great chin. If you watch that Connor fight, he I, it's not looking as good. Well, it didn't look as good in this fight. It's the first I, I time see, I've I would, seen Nate, I would say ah, first time I, I've seen him hit and step back in that many times. Like, even when Josh Thompson almost that. kicked his head off, he was back in like two seconds. I, yeah. And I'm not saying they shouldn't have called that because again, I would have called that fight too. But I, overall, I, I've never he looked like he was wincing away from the punches. I've never seen him do that. Yeah, but he was still landing one one twos, like not many, but he was still coming forward. He was landing one twos on Masvidal. There was a couple Masvidal, you know, he wasn't smiling so much in that fight. He was ready to come out for the fourth and fifth. And if you do watch that McGregor five rounder, look, Nate loses the first round and a half. I don't know how you give McGregor any of the other rounds. He destroyed him in the fourth. There wasn't much to be said for the fifth round on either fighter, but I still was giving it to Nate. So look, I, I McGregor is undersized. He's not a seventy pounder. Masvidal is much more uh, true to one seventy. It's more power. 
I, I don't extra, disagree. An extra 10 pounds of muscle. I'm just saying. I think there was he a possibility there. He looked physically there. much larger, too. I think there was a possibility there that Nate could have come in. and I mean, he would have had to finish the fight. But, it, I don't know. Anti-climactic way to sell your Hollywood belt. And what a Hollywood belt it was. I don't know about you, but I wanted to friggin'. I, it's I more than a Hollywood. It's the belt of oppression. <laughs> The, I mean, the this guys is the looking way it's up and be, raising right? this bell. They're throwing away the whole idea of it being a sport, and they're fully accepting and embracing that they're pro wrestling. Now we it, are just pro wrestling. Thank you. Oppress us. <laughs> Hoe us out. Take all our money. I mean, even Joe Rogan was talking about it after the fight. He's like, "Well, are we going to see a BMF belt for every single weight class, and is this going to be defended?" And I know he said it's one and done, but look how well it did. You know, it sold so many pay per views. And that's the thing. Yeah. I, I believe this. If you wanted to be a conspiracy theorist about John, about it, John, it's like, well, Nate's a big sell. This BMF thing could sell. Masvidal could sell. How do we make it even bigger? And Disney's sitting there thinking, well, The Rock does movies for it. We have him to tweet out that he wants a real belt, and he'll put it on him, and we'll guarantee him Jumanji 3. <laughs> you know? And then, well, I, I heard that they're doing a Mark Kerr MMA documentary or movie, and he, The Rock's trying to play Mark Kerr. Oh. Well, I, I'm just saying it's with Disney and WME Entertainment so heavily involved in the UFC, you've got to look at those kind of angles. Mm -hmm. And what really pissed me off was that I had to watch The Rock walk the fucking belt out. It, it was bad enough that, I, you know, I knew they were going to strap it on him at some point and he was going to be there. Anything to make it about anything other than the fighters. <laughs> well... Let's let's talk about that. For and a it's second. also it's also pro wrestling. Like doesn't doesn't WWE manage the Rock? Doesn't WWE handle uh, the WWE? Well, think about it this way: if it was, and don't get me wrong, your pro wrestling analogy is one hundred percent spot on. But if it was actually the WWF or WWE, Trump would have been involved. They wouldn't have just given him three seconds on the prelims. <laughs> Which I'm I again, choke slam somebody. I'm just I'm just saying it's so bizarre to me. That we live in a time where not only is the president like booted events, right? And that's what they fo that's what the media focuses on. I mean, even when George Bush uh, W was bombing, it, it's all oh, it's the silliest thing ever. Okay, so you have you have hated racist tre President Bush there. The crowd boos him, <laughs> yet they cheer Colby Covington, they cheer Dana White, who loved Trump. But they're all they're all um, signed underneath WME, who is like super left, far left liberal. Mm -hmm. They uh, support Harvey Weinstein and cover up for him. They uh, are in bed with ESPN and own that, and they're all just JW. And it's just it does not anybody see that like it's all bullshit. Well, the thing is, look it's at all Disney. bullshit. I like mean, you're being played. Everything is pro wrestling. All this makes sense if you guys can understand the fact that everything around you is just pro wrestling. Okay? It's characters doing made up shit trying to get you to spend money on stuff. So before we shift gears uh, to McGregor, White, WME Entertainment, and when you talk about Weinstein being protected by Disney, you're not wrong. Disney's adult movie company, just so everybody fucking knows, was Miramax. And who owned Miramax? Harvey and Bob Weinstein. They were literally are the they bought them and were making all those adult Tarantino movies with them. We're making the Kevin Smith movies with them. Get with it. They've known this forever. Disney is literally a factory for pedophilia on a high level. When somebody like uh what's her name? Bella Thorne goes on an interview about her book and she points out the fact that she was being raped. From the age of 6 to 14, and everybody, that's 8 years, everybody around her knew about it. And you're asking me about the paparazzi. She's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, why were you asking about the rapes? It's, yeah, exactly. Like, what are you talking are? I, I, she's like, I think I was a little more concerned about being raped than the paparazzi following me around. <laughs> so, Masvidal. First of all. His post-fight press conference was one of the most brilliant fucking things I've ever seen in my life. Dressed like Scarface, eating a huge slice of New York pizza, a bottle of liquor next to him, spitting nothing but facts, and then, I think being a smart businessman 
and calling out Canelo Alvarez about an hour after he knocked <laughs> out um, uh, man Kovalov. All right, I think that's brilliant. Yep. First of all, he is a decent boxer. His striking has looked good. He knows the kind of money McGregor made on that fight compar- comparatively. I think. Yeah, and uh, Canelo might take it just because he can avoid fighting a top six guy, top five guy. Why not? Make, this is a, it's not pay per view money. It's the zone. Zone money. will make it. Zone will make a crap load of money on it. They'll be happy to do it. Exactly. And by the way, just so people understand, the ESPN deal is regional for the UFC. Okay, DAZN actually has the UFC in certain European countries, so it's not like they don't work together. And by the way, fuck you, oh, yeah, ESPN+. That's, that's Plus. part of the lawsuit that the UFC is trying to not let out, is how much they are involved in the other promotions. Oh, is that right? With the, with the smaller leagues that they've been buying up? LFA is now part of Fight Pass. They just announced that. Yet another one they've absorbed. There, there, there may be, I mean, allegedly there may be. You can look it up. There's other people reporting on it. There may be more financial ties to a lot of these entities. And again, when I have to now, and, and I don't do it, I'm, I'm out with you, uh, ESPN+. Plus. I can only watch half the fights from PFL. There was a PFL card. I caught some of them. Um, really, I'm kind of pissed with the zone. Yeah. Because the Canelo thing, like I watched all the way until they announced the guys out, and it started over, and I couldn't skip forward the damn fight. And I, it was like I couldn't watch it until an hour later. Oh, really? And I had to, I had to skip past everything because it was already over gotcha so annoying yeah no it is annoying well i'll say this they're still better john than espn plus that literally if you miss the fight that was in china Mm -hmm. at three in the morning you go there to go watch it on espn plus and they've got the winner being like in the thumbnail (laughs) or 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 literally the crushing blow or the person's like hitting the canvas not for just the main event but for the four fucking fights on the main card so like when, when I went to ESPN Plus after the pay-per-view, you see Corey Anderson knocking the shit out of Johnny. I mean, just everything you can get ruined, they're ruining it for you. At least Fight Pass, which I would suggest everybody just VPN in. Guys, for 43 U.S. American dollars, yes, uh, I got the pay-per-view, okay? And I got six months of Fight Pass <laughs> for $43. I mean, Fight Pass cost me, if I buy it for a year in the United States, 110 bucks. I got it for the equivalent of what? Sixty dollars for the year by VPNing through the Philippines. It's one of the last. Listen, once that goes, I don't know if I'm going to be able to watch this shit because I can't watch ESPN Plus with three quarters of the screen blocked off about college fucking football and watching Cowboy Cerrone eat fucking gas station food in a fucking Air <laughs> Force fighter <coughs> two dozen times for something I paid sixty fucking dollars for. <laughs> Call me crazy. Call me crazy. All right, so Connor. John, I don't know if you saw this, but aside from only having to pay $1,000, $1,000 fine for punching that old man in the fucking face, that's what he paid, $1,000. I'll tell you right now, if No Guns Jason Burmis punches an old man on camera, it's going to cost me more than $1,000, but it don't cost McGregor more than $1,000. That's and, wild, man. And not that, only that, that John... Just Irish, is that just how it is in Ireland? The Irish law? What's that read, John? So, people 18... hit old men so often, it's like <laughs> it's like a speeding ticket. 18 previous convictions before this. 18, including another assault in 2009. And what do they show on the cover? Other than that headline? Oh, he's with his son. He's a good papa. He's Mr. Incredible. Look, he's got a kid. <laughs> They're always trying to portray this guy as a family guy. Well, they're showing you he's walking away from punching a 60-year-old man in the face for nothing for $1,000 and has 18 previous convictions. Why isn't this headlines in the United States at all? That's insanity. (laughs) It's the craziest thing. Predator elite. Man, they're sucking our souls. (laughs) They're in control. It's, It's the top versus the rest of us, guys. Don't let them fool you. So, um, let's talk about it. Now we have two different instances where Conor McGregor um, has now been brought up about the sexual assault. Ariel Hawani has finally mentioned the second uh, one, and he talked to his management. The management said, oh, it's just the tabloids and rumors. But what's more interesting is nobody asked it at the press conference, but Brett Brett Akimoto, who works for ESPN, at the very last thing, he asks about 
you know, the fight with Cowboy and Conor McGregor, but the very last thing, he doesn't ask Dana White what he knows, but he says, well, no one's asked you this yet, but we have the two separate sexual assault allegations. You know, as a promoter, uh, how does that play into you trying to get him another, or do another, promote another fight with him? And he's like, yeah, well, he just punched that old man in the face. Totally won't, he acknowledges it, but he won't talk about it, John. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it feels like a canned, canned thing altogether. Like, uh, they probably, they probably set it up. They probably asked a few times, did a few takes to make sure they got it just right. Um, I was, I tried to nonchalant ask Brett, like, cause I follow him on Twitter. Uh, he was totally out some pre, you know, fight stuff, whatever, and commented on it and commented something like Connor. I was like, Hey, do you think the delay in Connor's, um, next fight has anything to do with the sexual, uh, rape allegations? And Twitter wouldn't let me post a question. Mm-hmm. It says tweet, tweet not available or whatever. I couldn't post. I couldn't, I couldn't have that even in the tweet or I couldn't reply. Or I couldn't ask a question. Insanity. So and, there's something going on. Exactly. And again, you know, I went into uh, the Twitter shadow ban thing and, and I typed my name in and it says I don't have a ghost ban. But again, anybody can right now go to my account. In fact, you know what? We'll do it live. We'll do it live. You can go to my account, and there's no doubt there's the ghost ban. I, I've never seen anything like it, but but we're there. Let's copy my pin tweet. Here it is. It looks completely different when I'm logged in. Well, we're just going to do it. If we hit these 19 replies, look at that. Oh, look at that. All these All these different links. And yet, right over here, if I'm not logged in, and I go to that same thing, that's it. Watch, we'll hit the 19 replies. Let's see what happens. Same thing. Oh, no. I have two replies. And all of those links are gone. Everyone, this is a pinned tweet. And this is the stuff um, that was getting retweeted by a TSN correspondent who then interviewed Dana White the night of the fights. And when I said, hey, man, looks like I got shadow banned after you started retweeting my stuff. Zero response. <laughs> Zero response. What does that tell you? When our news media can't even expose a can't comment, he's supposed to be just a celebrity. He's not the president of the fucking United States. If it was the president, forget about it. We'd already have an impeachment. Mike Pence. We are president. we are ruled by consumerism. Oh, dude, that's what it is. We can cut deals with China. That's fine. We can we can pat ourselves on the back for buying Teslas and driving them around, even though the batteries are made because African slave children are mining cobalt in the Congo. That's okay. It's just, yeah, like we can buy our iPhones. Yeah, I have one because, <laughs> uh, you know, some, some poor slave made it in China. Well, you know what, John? I also wanted to talk about how I did a video uh, on one of your tweets and, and this is why we're going to go to John Fitch's Twitter feed. If you're not here, then you're missing mm-hmm. out. Um, but Fitch, you tweeted out basically uh, this young woman from 1992 that sounded a lot like Greta, Greta Thunberg. Where oh, is yeah. that tweet? Um, wh- why do you tell people about that? The prequel. Yeah, this uh, it's not new, guys. The stories, the, the fear mongering, it's cyclical. It keeps, keeps happening. It's not a new thing. Um, this Greta Thunberg thing, she's not the first teenage kid that was trying to fire people up about climate change. It's happened in 1992. There's probably somebody in uh, the 70s. Somebody's going to find some old real footage somewhere. It looked like the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> some girl, you know, saying, uh, the future is, is dead. We're all going to die before... 1992 and then we didn't so they had to bring a new girl out in 1992 and now uh it's greta well what i thought was just amazing about the whole thing is that this story it hasn't been you know it's not front page news in the, in the news but just came out a couple weeks ago and let's go to that that tweet right here this girl <clears throat> several times mentions the hole in the ozone layer and that was what was really heavily pushed upon us as mm-hmm. kids where yeah. you can't go out in the sun we're going to get cancer from that. We're not protected. She mentions the ozone layer like four times. She's like, you don't know how to save the ozone layer. I remember Drew, I remember Drew Carey used to have a joke about, you know, <coughs> living in Ohio and it being cold as shit. And he'd stand outside with aerosol cans going, shh, <laughs> shh, 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 shh
And that was the thing. It was not so much carbon uh, dioxide, although that was mentioned. It was CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. Well, I got news for people. China is putting out a lot, a lot of chlorofluorocarbons because they don't give a fuck. China is a problem. Yeah, except for, John, even though there are record CFCs in the air, well, NASA had to concede that since they started recording it in 1982, the 2019 ozone hall hole is the smallest on record since its discovery. Now, here's where it gets key, okay? Number one, we're the only ones that really, the Western world is the only ones that curbed our CFC use. Now, by their best estimates, they said if everybody went along with the plan, okay, by their best estimates, scientists expected the anarchic, our Antarctic ozone to recover back to the 1980 level around 2070. That's 51 fucking years away. That's how off they were on science. That from mm. 1982 to the fact that China has increased the output of CFCs globally, okay, there's more now than ever. No one curbed shit. And somehow it's at the smallest. It ain't 2070, folks. So are we going to buy their 12-year bullshit again and again and again? 12 years, John. They just keep moving the goalposts. <laughs> it, was the, it was the ozone before, and then that went away, so now it's got to be something else. It was global warming, and now it's climate change. It was global cooling before, wasn't it? There, we were, 70s, we were, global cooling. Yeah, in the 70s. <laughs> so, yeah, they had some Greta back in the 70s telling us everything was going to freeze, and the polar bears are going to freeze to death. They wouldn't be able to get through the ice for food, and then... It's global warming, and, this, and the ozone layer is going to kill us. And then, yeah, now it's, it's climate change. Climate's always been changing. Deserts it's exist. Changing. You know, I mean, they, they exist, John. I'm, I'm just wondering if there was a huge civilization living in a desert, or perhaps Egypt wasn't always that way. Maybe the Ice Age that they tell us about in school mm -hmm. didn't come because there was no industrialization. It became it came because there were sun cycles. It's 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 wild yep. stuff. That yeah, who who knows? You couldn't completely judge the heat of a nuclear explosion over the course of hundreds of millions of years or billions of years. <laughs> oh, it, it boggles my mind. But again, I see the same game gameplay and. You know, when you put that up there, it also reminded me that now you got Leo DiCaprio running around with Greta. And this is, the sa again, the same playbook. When we were kids, constantly you'd see people like Whoopi Goldberg and Ted Danson and Neil Patrick Harris. Remember those More You Know ads mm -hmm. with our Saturday morning cartoons? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and know. this was in 92 when I was like 13 years old. And I was like, yeah! Those fucking bastards were gonna we're gonna save the rainforest and we're gonna stop global warming because that's what they called it. And really, listen, I give credit where credit is due. It was meeting Alex Jones and talking to Jones in person, having explained the carbon uh, credit tax system mm -hmm. and uh, global control over another form of taxation, and then limiting people's uh, land rights and They're rights to electricity. their ability to be mobile. They want people to be less mobile. Compact cities for us, less well, energy every, uses, they want higher everybody, taxes. They don't, well, it's also, you know, you get that um, you, people can't express ideas. They can't exchange ideas as easily if they, they're stuck in one place. If they can also take over control of the Internet like China. Imagine if they were able to limit our ability to move around and limit our ability to communicate through, you know, censoring the Internet the way China has. Like that, they'd have total control. Well, not only that, John, I mean, let, let, let's be honest. Right now, I'd say that we already have a censorship of our internet. If, we, if, if people can't you know, find Jason Burgess' Conor yeah, McGregor it's, tweets, it's, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, and I know that um, somebody just sent me something regarding uh, Project Veritas and their investigation that Twitter has now also um, shadow banned and really stopped a lot of the Epstein stuff, that research, which kind of is my yeah. bread and butter. we got another super chat. Please start a Telegram channel. Don't want to see the banned tweets uh, in videos. Telegram's kind of only Europe, though. Do you know about Telegram? I do know about Telegram. I don't really use it, though. Yeah, me neither. I, I, it's, it's tough, man. There's just <laughs> so much social media. There's I don't so have much stuff going out there. Like It's hard to um, put yourself into every platform. 
especially yeah. without a team. And I don't want to get to the point of a team, maybe one day, but I don't want well, people- no, I, I, we, I, no, you should strive for that because that means you're doing so well and you're making so much money. You can employ people. Yeah. Well, again, that's, a, that, that, that's an inherent good. You're, yeah. you're, you're giving someone else the ability to sustain life by being, you know, so, an asset to you. That's, that's, that's something I hope I can grow to someday uh, where I have a team of people. I'm able to pay a salary. That's pretty cool. It would be, dude, I, I just don't, I always get to the point where I'm like, it's great that I'm taking care of me and my family, but then like all of a sudden somebody else and their family is dependent on me. I get nervous. Mm. I'm just saying, I get nervous, you know, <laughs> responsibility, man, yeah, responsibility. Well, was... the more you take on, the better you feel. Don't be afraid of power. Jason Burmis. <laughs> don't be afraid of power. My son. All right. I, I'll remember that. I don't... Gather it, flex it, be proud of that power. Well, you know what? I, I try to keep it as real as I can. As part, as part of masculinity, man. That's part of embracing your masculinity. It really is. Don't be afraid of that power. Is that something that uh, was discussed at the, the 21 conference you did last week? No, but it's something that I've, I've come into and started to believe more of. Because there's been times where I didn't, I didn't um, you know, lean on my network and other things. Just, just out of, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be that responsible. I want to take that much on my shoulders. And that's just a little bit of fear. And I think some of it's conditioned into us so that we don't rise up bigger than we're supposed to be or, you know, a controlled position. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, man, flex that power, use it. Well, John, I'm going to say this. We got, we got about uh, almost a hundred watching right now. Let's take some questions, guys, get Mm. your questions in right now. I'm going to bring the, uh, the, where is it? I know I have it up here somewhere. This is it right here. We're going to bring up the questions. Oh, and there was that super chat. Once again, thank you, Vizorak. We uh, appreciate that. But like you said, so many um, so many of these platforms, it, it's kind of difficult to keep up on every single one. Like I know people do subscribe mm-hmm. star, and I know you have a Patreon. I have a Patreon. Um, my Pitch Smash uh, fighting system. <laughs> but for me, it's like I want to pick one thing, at least for now, and go with it. I, I'd love to – like I have a Teespring store, and I'm eligible – at thirty, th- actually at ten thousand subscribers to put that Teespring store in, mm. YouTube won't give it to me. They won't let me uh, integrate it. At thirty thousand, I'm supposed to be able to have memberships and emojis and people being able to donate four ninety nine a month. They won't give it to me. They say that it's not out of beta, even though it's two years old. I have no uh, repercussions after that. Every one of my videos is demonetized out of the gates. <laughs> Every single one doesn't matter what it is. This Mine video, are too. I, I Mine think... It's ridiculous. I don't even. I don't even talk about that. Oh man, dude! That's three not... out of four of our. Uh, this is number five, I think. But three out of four of our mixed martial mindsets are completely demonetized. I think we got one where I think that initial episode was able to keep its monetization. Let's see what we have here. Uh, Double zero says the internet is the vehicle they are using to destroy us. It has destroyed small businesses. Who can compete with the internet? It's a race to the bottom. What do you think about that? I disagree wholeheartedly. Uh, internet is a tool. It's up to you how to use it. Small businesses, like I'm a small business. I, I've met a lot of people who are small businesses using the internet to make a shitload of money. Like you are just resent, resistant to change. It's different. Like you build, you've got to build your, your online store. You've got to build your online community, your little small little niche. Right? That's up to you. It's not about the street location anymore. You got to be able to do it online. Everything is being eaten by the internet, yes, but that that can be played to your advantage. Like, because we're still at the the beginning ages, right? We're still at the very beginning of the internet. So, like, you can get on the ground floor and find a really, really easy way, or not easy, but a very uh, um, applicable way to make a lot of money. I'm with you. I, I think that you got to move with the future and mm-hmm. uh, who can compete with the internet. You have to be the internet. You be have to find internet. a way. And, and I'll be honest, man, in the late nineties, when there was that first boom, when I went off to college, you know, my, first of all, I grew up dirt poor, but, um, my stepfather, he had an auction house and my mother was doing that with the advent of eBay. Um, they were able to, in, in just a couple of years, totally turn their lives around. I never went to Disneyland as a kid. They were taking my sister and the family. <laughs> we didn't have a computer. There's all of a sudden two computers mm-hmm. in the house. I, I mean, it didn't last forever in the sense that, you know, it kept growing and growing and growing, but it grew to a point where it was very sustainable and they had a more comfortable life than they did before. You know, utilizing technology, I think, is absolutely key. 
Ian mm-hmm. Gifford says, jo- uh, Jason, part of the ESPN deal is that they have to have a championship belt at the main event for every pay-per-view. That helped the BMF belt manifest. I didn't know that that was part of it, but it makes sense. I mean, makes sense. I mean, uh, yeah, that's why you have uh, the uh, whatever. The, you have so many fake belts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they do. They have a lot of fake belts. It's just, that's what happens because they don't. They don't. They're playing this game where they're telling one group that yeah, we're a sport regulated, we're super clean, and we're the next big league. And they turn over here to the next group and they're like, oh no, we're not a sport at all. We're just entertainment, and our trophies are just uh, awards we give to those people that night. It's just costume jewelry. It's not a real heavyweight title it's just a it's just a shiny thing i remember and they're going back and forth and they're playing both sides telling people that like hoping that those two sides never get together and talk and, and by the way to, you know to speak more of the circus espn plus aspect they signed tyson fury what whereas canelo is with the zone tyson fury is with espn plus and what did they do this weekend well they had tyson fury go overseas uh, to Saudi Arabia and do the pay-per-view with WWE as one of the main draws. I have no idea if he fought, if he was just there as a show. I don't follow that stuff. Mm. But he was on the poster. He's on the promo. You know, they're trying to bring more and more American fans into this. And how do you do that? Pro- Let's bring our 6'7 dude into pro wrestling. You know, maybe that'll help. There's a lot of eyes on Cain Velasquez right now. And he's mm-hmm. he's pretty much shot to the top of the WWE, one, because, you know, he kicked the shit out of Brock Lesnar in MMA. But two, uh, he's got a name. He was one of the most memorable heavyweight champions, uh, in my opinion, the last generation. And he's not a bad wrestler. He's actually super impressive. Like, I was shocked when he was doing that Lucha Libre stuff. This is, uh, so this is a big thing, too, is the UFC sharing uh, fight footage from Kane and Brock with the UFC, with with WWE to use for promotion reasons. Have you seen any of that? I, you know, I haven't. I don't watch why, wrestling because they're really you're usually pretty really tight with what you know the the video and shit content that they own. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you can, if they're doing that, they're definitely working with these guys. And it's not you know it's there's a trade. It's one boss running all of them. Is Stylebender crazy for wanting Romero next? I'll say this. You know, I didn't think that uh, Stylebender was going to be as dominant over Robert Whitaker. Whitaker's the real deal. Gastelum is the real deal. He beat him. He didn't look great against Anderson Silva. He didn't look great against Brad Tavares, in my opinion. However, you know, he hasn't lost yet. He says he... uh, Brunson has wrestling. He never wrestles. (laughs) He comes in with his chin Mm -hmm. swinging. That was another, uh, you know, picked matchup for Adesanya. Uh, He's not crazy if he thinks he can win, and that would cement him... I think as the most dominant 185 champion since Anderson Silva, if he can take out Romero, there's no one else left in that division, in my opinion. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of guys left at uh, 185 for him. No. Well, I, uh, there's one guy, Jared Cannonier. Jared Cannonier looks like he's mm-hmm. ready to fucking kill everybody. Um, yeah. But I think that they're going to protect Adesanya. I don't think they want that fight. Throw him on the undercard. <laughs> What's that? They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do him dirty, put him on the undercard and have him fight super tough on name guys. He's looked incredible. I, I like mm. Cannoneer, but listen, Romero's older. I think he's earned the shots. He's fought literally nothing but number ones, twos, and threes the last five years. So I wanna see that fight. I think it's interesting. What what do you think Stylebender beats him or do you think Romero edges him out? I don't know, man. Uh Romero's a beast. But I could see Adesanya picking at him for five rounds and then and then get him tired and, and you know put him away in the fourth. I, you know, I, I think it's an interesting fight. He's but keeping you're right, his you know, range he has had and gas problems. just controlling the distance. I think he could set some traps as possible. But you I, never know. If Romero can back him up on the fence, it's a different story. I, I think it's a great fight, and I want to see it. Um, let's see. So someone says, yes, M- Melgovich. Or is that yes? Says hi, Jason. Even the Irish TV channel TG4 is not covering McGregor rape allegations. Well, they have to call it Irish Sports Star over there. They're still b- bound by the laws that protect these violent rapists. Uh, it's pretty crazy to me, especially when you look at the uh, the conviction rate. And I and I'm just saying this: the tide's turning, guys. In 8%. January, when I did my first McGregor stories for We Are Change, go look at the thumbs up and thumbs down. It's 50-50, and there's hundreds of them. Now, when I do these videos, it Two months ago when I was doing the videos, it was 80-20. Now, 
it's almost 95, 5%. People are getting the picture and props mm. to, uh, at last emperor KGB, AKA prime Fedor, uh, for that amazing, uh, McGregor thread that's starting to go viral. It's very well done. All right, let's, uh, Continue. Mr. Fitch's early thoughts on Khabib versus Tony Ferguson. I mean, I'm a big Khabib fan. Train with him. He's a stud on top. He gets uh, Tony into the ground on the fence or in the fence on the ground. And I don't see, you know, he's going to have a hard time doing anything from there. I'll say this. He's the one guy that A, deserves the shot. And B, I think, has a possibility that he could he could maybe win. Remember, Khabib's never lost a round. Not a round. And Dustin hit him with one solid punch in that fight in the second round. Maybe had him take a step back. In no way was he wobbled or rocked. Uh, I think Ferguson's got a little bit better range than Poirier. I think he also is a little bit uh, more dynamic physically, a.k.a. lanky. Maybe gives him some more problems. But it's hard to bet a guy bet against a guy that's never lost before (laughs) and has wrestling as his main background. It's not just some hype train. Mm -hmm. He had to fight tooth and nail to get where he is, and he's still not being promoted in the United States. This is a guy that wants to give to charities, that wants to give starving people in Africa that don't have water, water, and he's completely ignored by the media here unless they can um, you know, pose him as some kind of a, a brute because he jumped out of the cage and beat the shit out of Dylan Dennis for a second. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Just put it out there. Uh, what do we got? Bridging the Gap. I love the early 2000s era of WWF, WWE Entertainment, Mick Foley and Sheena. What's Fitch's thoughts on great uh, gra- grapplers like AKA Gregor Gillespie competing against good wrestlers that are bigger and star- uh, stronger a la Kevin Lee, especially at lightweight? What are the uh, changes he can make in his game? Well, my big thing with that fight was, you know, you have a really outstanding wrestler um, up against an average wrestler. And I didn't, I, if I just watched him fight, if I didn't see the, the lead up into it, I didn't see his ears, I wouldn't know that he was a wrestler at all. He took one half-assed shot that wasn't set up well at all. And then there wasn't another single... Uh, attempt. It wasn't a setup. There wasn't anything that looked like he had any interest in any way of getting in on the hips and bringing the fight to the ground. So uh, it doesn't matter how good of a wrestler you are. It doesn't matter how good your your weapon is. I got a couple good uh, guns. They're really nice guns. But if I leave them locked in my safe, like what good does it do me? These guys have a weapon that they could use and they choose not to because they want to make daddy happy. <laughs> Unky Danny. It's Unky Danny. Unky I don't Danny. think they no one's called him Papa Danny yet. Pat, pat me, pat me on the head, Daddy. <laughs> I'm a good boy. Please give me a title shot. So upcoming fights uh this this uh weekend in Moscow. This is another Russia rush card. Uh, originally supposed to be Santos versus uh Volkov. Interesting fight there. Volkov hasn't fought since that incredible uh, knockout by Derek Lewis on him, which he was dictating that fight. I he, think- was, he was, yeah, handily handling that guy. But I, I was saying that as the fight let on, I was like, man, this guy just keeps letting him off the hook. Mm-hmm. This is, he's going to pay for this. Power doesn't fade. And, and in the fifth round, he was a lot more gassed, and his hands were low, which even set up that shot at the very, very end mm-hmm. that uh, put him unconscious. Now, Greg Hardy in no way deserves a fight against him. Greg Hardy took a, <laughs> took a, an inhaler during his last fight. They still tried to gift him the victory and then gifted him a no contest when it should have been a disqualification, and I had him losing the fight uh, to that guy. Do, they, do you think they know something? <clears throat> Is Volkov's chin just well, donezo after that fight? Are they banking on Well, they have, have they run all these guys through the, uh, the, the UFC uh, Performance Institute. I got conspiracy theory on that place too. I, I don't know what these guys are thinking. Why would you go to the, why would you go to a place that measures all of your your skills, your your strengths, your weaknesses? Where they can know everything about you and they can take that information and give it to the matchmaker. What are you stupid? Are you stupid? Like but- you want to give these guys every piece of information about you physically. And then you're going to turn it over to the matchmaker where he can be like, oh, well, this guy's an asshole. Uh, he fights his too hard on contracts or he doesn't move the needle or whatever bullshit. 
let's make sure we match him up with the guys who he scientifically is the worst matched up against. <laughs> I would be in there faking that shit. I, I would, <laughs> go in there, go in there, and like, whoops, I couldn't bench 150. I'm really weak. Like, whatever you got to do, just get your shitty numbers off. <laughs> and what do you think about the main event? Uh, you know, obviously Zabit is really fun and to then, watch. Uh, was that great? then you got great Greg Hardy and whatever? Like I read a bunch of stuff about. I, I was like, yeah, Greg Hardy's a dick. Yeah, why did I put in this wife beater, or whatever type guy? But then I read this stuff about it, and man, I don't think it's as bad as people are trying to make him out to be. It's to me, it's like what I read, it sounded like he was with this girl, and she started she fucked some rapper, and then he got mad at her, and then she got physical with him, and he was trying to stop her. I don't know. That was what I, that's what I read from all the stuff. Have you seen the pictures? Yeah. But like, if a girl's coming at you with like a weapon and you throw her down. Yeah. But I mean, listen, I don't want to get too crazy, uh, but I've heard that he had her at gunpoint at some point. mm. (laughs) I I mean, I'm just saying uh, again, I don't think he's proved himself in the octagon. And listen, Mm -hmm. it's not like he's, there's rape allegations against the guy. I know he has convictions on domestic disputes. Um, mm-hmm. I, I thought that the situation was crazy. He just hasn't proved himself either in, in the octagon to me. I mean, I don't think, I think he's a third rate heavyweight. I don't think he can beat anybody in the top 20, John. I mean, man, a lot of heavyweights aren't that great. I'm sorry, but, uh, it's the weight class that you have the most opportunity to get as far the fastest and make the most amount of money. Cause there's big guys and there's a lot of terrible big guys. There's a lot of guys who don't train that hard are lazy. They're not used to having to fight. Uh, you know, and and if you can hit somebody hard and you're fairly athletic, like you can go pretty damn far. So, what do you think about this, Calvin Cater uh, versus Zabit uh, Magomed Sharipov? They that's now the headliner. Um, I love this fight. I think they both Zabit. look great in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that if Cater has so much power, if he gets in there with a big one-two, maybe he shuts off his lights. But has, has he been as? Uh, Megan Madigan, but I've been out of it. Uh, <laughs> has he been hurt much? I've only seen him in the I, UFC. I, I don't see, I don't think I've ever loss. seen him. Face. And I haven't He's seen always got the bad. same Abraham Lincoln face. Yeah, I haven't seen him hurt bad. I, I've seen him be, be able to get into some pretty weird uh positions. He got that knee bar. Uh, remember that 92 has, knee bars? He has RAF. Yeah, I mean, RAF, resting Abe face. <laughs> resting Abe face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen, I think it's actually a super fight. Um, it's on early, too. Uh, great. The prelims He's start hot. at 11 a.m. on my time. That's 8 a.m. your time. And the main card's on at 2 p.m. my time, 11 a.m. your time. Um, it's one I'll be watching. I- I'm excited to see it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, guys they're trying to bring up. It's it's in Moscow. I'm glad they're doing these type of fights. But you know where I won't be watching it? ESPN fucking Plus. That's where I mm. won't be watching it. Fuck you, ESPN Plus. I'll be watching it on Fight Pass. Uh, with a VPN so I can watch. Like, a lot of people missed it. But when Corey Anderson knocked out uh, Johnny Walker, one of the things you did not see was while they were sitting there waiting to put the hands up, Corey Walker jumped down on the ground, did the worm, jumped up, did, did the dance that he was doing, and mocked him for a solid 30 to 45 seconds. You know, the <laughs> UFC didn't show that replay. They're not there to push him. Instead, they're there to push him back behind Dominic Reyes in their attempt to protect John Jones. Because I promise you, Reyes is the easier fight for Jones. No one wants a piece of Corey Anderson because he is the top dog at 205, in my opinion, right now, John. Put him on the undercard again. But, yeah, Corey Anderson is a monster. That dude, he's the man. He's going he's gonna to make things happen. He's the needle mover. That's, he should need, Corey Anderson needs to change his nickname. To the needle mover, Corey, <laughs> the needle mover Anderson. You heard it here, folks. I love it. I think it's great. I think it's perfect. I think that people need to go check out JohnFitch.net and especially the YouTube channel over here, guys, where John Fitch knows nothing is going on even more than five times a week. You had that really interesting um, interview with Kevin Pham. Yeah, it was yesterday. Awesome. It was, it was a good long form interview. You talked Bitcoin, you talked self sustainability, you talked financial crises and how to thrive in them. Uh, really great stuff. So, people, make sure you go there, you subscribe. I want to remind everybody that if you missed this broadcast or you just want to be able to hear it or send it to somebody that listens to MP3s or uh, podcasts, thegruelingtruth.com is the network we are on. Hopefully, we're going to continue to expand. If you want to support my work, 
Thumbs this video up, share it, join the Burmese Brigade. We're at almost 36,000. We want to hit 36, 40, 50, and then 100,000 subscribers. Keep on trucking. And if you want to financially support me, guys, I do it one way, and it's through the GoFundMe. I want to thank you all. John, you got anything else to say? That's about it. Thanks uh, for tuning in. All right. Thank you, guys. We will see you all Favorite. on the flip side. Thank you.